Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, a pleasure to be here and be able to provide you with an update on Altec Chemicals and our uh, high purity alumina project. So, Altec's a Perth based company um, listed on the ASX, our code uh, ATC, and we're also now listed on the, on the Frankfurt Exchange, dual listed A3Y, and we're positioned to become a world leading producer of high purity alumina. So just a bit of background on high purity alumina. Uh, as the name suggests, it's, uh, it's purified alumina at 99.99% purity, and importantly, uh, negligible sodium, um, iron, and other impurities in the product. And it differs from smelter grade alumina, which is about 99.95% alumina, and, uh, and has sodium impurities in it. The demand for HPA, primarily it's the synthetic sapphire industry, as you saw in the videos, and that's underpinned really by the LED industry. Um, the industry, sapphire, synthetic sapphire makers demand very pure alumina, and importantly, uh, alumina without any sodium in it. The lithium ion battery uh, sector is, uh, is in the mining vernacular, the, the blue sky uh, demand for high purity alumina. As we're seeing, these manufacturers demand uh, high purity alumina with minimal impurities for use in, in lithium ion batteries and we'll talk a bit more about that in the coming slides. Like a lot of industrial minerals or chemicals, uh, you pay a price for purity. Uh, the price of HPA now in Japan is around $30,000 a tonne or $30 a kilo. When we put our uh, feasibility study together we used a, a rather more conservative price of $23,000 a tonne. Now this, this slide here uh, seeks to illustrate the uh, synthetic sapphire business and, and how high purity alumina plays a part or the, the key part in that, in that process. So to produce synthetic sapphire you start out with high purity alumina. Uh, it's heated up and cooled down over, over a period of about 21 days in, in kilns and from that comes a large uh, single uh, synthetic sapphire bull, pure, pure sapphire cores are cut from the bull, and then there's really two main streams. There's the, the wafer stream, and the wafers underpin uh, LED substrates and also computer chips or microprocessors. Then there's the shapes, and synthetic sapphire is, is uh, extremely hard. It's nine on the most scale just behind diamonds, and this is why it's demanded for things such as uh, camera lenses, uh, watch faces, and more and more for the covers of iPhones. And the next video just illustrates the properties of, of synthetic sapphire and, and why it's uh, being more highly demanded. This is an Apple Watch. Um, I think we've lost the sound, have we? Yeah. So that's quite impressive, and if you do own an Apple Watch, you can uh, do that at home if you like. Just don't use a diamond tip drill bit, please. It might scratch it. <laughs> Look, what we're seeing is the uptake of, uh, of synthetic sapphire glass in, in iPhones. Or, or um, We saw uh, HTC release the Ultra uh, 128 megabyte phone earlier this year, and that has a synthetic sapphire screen. And uh, Apple has used synthetic sapphire in their iPhones uh, for years uh, in the, the camera lens and also in the fingerprint recognition screen. Uh, both of those, uh, it's important that they don't scratch. Also Huawei and Virtu, which are luxury phone manufacturers, use synthetic sapphire in their screens as well. Oops, next slide. But it's really the light emitting diodes, as I said before, and you can see on the right hand side a cross section of a, of, a, of a LED light and it's underpinned by a synthetic sapphire substrate. And uh, to the bottom is what the demand curve looks like for LED lights and we 
heard from the previous speaker about the electrification of, of Africa, but this, this phenomenon's happening all around the world. And not only are people using LED lights, but they're also replacing their incandescent bulbs with LEDs. And this is really what underpins the demand for high purity alumina. Lithium ion batteries, uh, it's the separator sheets. Uh, these are the, the sheets that uh, separate the anode and the cathode. And manufacturers are using high purity alumina to coat these sheets as a, as a retardant and also as a fail safe in, in, these, um, in these separators. This is what the demand looks like for, for battery separators. Uh, we've all heard about the uptake and, of lithium-ion batteries and the electrification of the world. This, is, this information is uh, from a study done by Deutsche Bank last year. We can see at the moment the use of high-purity alumina in 2017 is quite small, less than 1,000 tonnes, but growing extremely rapid, rapidly in sync with the lithium-ion battery industry. Global uh, high purity demand overall. Um, an American firm, Grandview Research, uh, put out a number earlier this year. They predict that the, the, the um, high purity aluminum market will be worth $6.4 billion uh, by 2024. Uh, this is a bit more aggressive than the, the forecast that we're using, but the market at the moment sits around 20,000, 25,000 tonnes, but growing rapidly, 17, 18% a year to well over 80,000 tonnes in 2024. Our plant should be on stream by 2020, so you can see it'll be placing product into a, a market where there's uh, really strong demand growth. Now, the demand for high-purity alumina, no surprise, it's all in the Asia-Pacific region, the, the manufacturing hub of the world. Uh, our plant in Malaysia, in Johor, just across the road from Singapore, is really ideally situated to service the demand of the manufacturers for our product. Uh, Taiwan, China, South Korea, the usual manufacturing hubs in Asia. High purity alumina has been around for a long time. Um, the current producers are listed on that slide. It's quite interesting, it's very fragmented. There's no dominant single producer and most of the existing producers are simply little divisions within large uh, conglomerates and some of the names you'll recognise up there such as uh, Sumitomo or, or Sasol. The way that these producers uh, manufacture high-purity alumina at the moment is actually by aluminium metal. And those of us that understand the aluminium industry know that you know, 40 to 60% of aluminium metal's cost is made up of electricity. So they're using a very expensive feedstock. And it's sort of like a three-step process. Uh, aluminium comes from bauxite, smelter-grade alumina, aluminium metal. They reprocess it, drop out the sodium to produce high-purity alumina. Our process is a single step process using a, a, a high alumina feedstock in Kalen and using an established HCL process. In one step, we take the high purity alumina out of the Kalen. Uh, this deposit is just down the road from Perth, about 140 k to the east, uh, close to the highway. Mining lease has been granted and the project as of today, we put out an ASX announcement this morning, but it's fully permitted. The mining is approved. The, the construction of the plants approved. So basically subject to our financing, which I'll talk about in a minute, it's, it's ready to go to start uh, exporting the product from the port of Fremantle up to Johor in Malaysia. This is just a quick um, analysis of our, of our deposit on the right hand side. We've got a huge resource there. We've got more than 250 years of, of kaolin. Uh, we've done a reserve on, on 30 years, which is the um, feasibility study for the project life. But you can see nature has done just an amazing job for us. The, the, the project or the deposit simply consists of alumina and silica with very low impurities, remarkably very low iron and, and even more remarkably in WA, just basically no sodium in the deposit. So it's very clean. Just a little bit about our process. Uh, we're using an established process. Uh, we didn't invent it, unfortunately. It's, it's open technology. It was developed in the 1980s in the US uh, alumina industry. Uh, the US uh, doesn't have a lot of bauxite, but they've got uh, a lot of kaolin. They ran a program to produce alumina from kaolin. It was very successful, but on a cost basis, it couldn't compete with the Bayer process, which introduces sodium into the product. And there was, in fact, there was little demand for high purity alumina in the 1980s. Um, but now, compared to the way traditional producers are producing high purity alumina, this process is a lower cost and the demand for high purity alumina has arrived. LEDs, sapphire glass, lithium ion batteries. So we're tapping into that demand today. This is where we'll sit on the cost curve. Um, 
will, will be a lower cost producer and at about the same impurity. The reason we can do that is we own our own feedstock. Uh, Malaysia is a relatively low cost country and we're reusing uh, hydrogen chloride in the process. We have a, a beautiful German HCL recycling plant which, which, which we use. So the project status, so we uh, announced our BFS in 2018. Uh, Mitsubishi Corporation, they'll take all of our products, so we signed them up uh, for a 10-year off-take agreement and there's the option to extend that, but they'll take all of it. Uh, the plant site in Malaysia in, in an established industrial park is secured. Uh, as I just said, the Meckering project's ready to go. We've been working with the German government. This is a very high-tech plant. Most of the plant and equipment comes from German or other European Union countries, and Germany has a wonderful um, um, export credit facility which we're going to tap into, and we've been working with German government-owned bank KFW. So uh, the bank's just finalising its due diligence. They'll be the sole lender for the project. Uh, we lost about th two or three months with changing out uh, EPC contractor, but we've now settled with SMS Group, a German contractor that's, that's experienced with the high-purity alumina business. We've agreed on a, a fixed price turnkey lump sum EPC contract. At the moment, they're pricing up the EPC contract in Germany, um, and they should be done before the end of this year. They're offering us throughput and process guarantees, which are most important for project finance, as you'd understand. The road ahead, it's amazing that uh, it's the end of August already, so we've only got four months left, but we, we want to wind up the uh, EPC contract price in the next couple of months. Uh, the bank due diligence will be concluded and then we'll make application for export credit finance from the German government uh, before the end of this year. 2018 will be, uh, once we get the debt approved, we'll be raising the project equity um, and then we'll start construction in 2018 of the plant. The construction is 18 months to a two year process and then, and then commissioning. Our plant's fully designed, and, and uh, as I said before, the EPC contract is costing it up now. Uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, it's on a four hectare site up in Johor. There's, as in any established industrial park, there's power, water, gas, or all, all that we can tap into. So the infrastructure's fabulous up there. Just a final graph, just, you know, the market's finally catching up, I think, to, to our project and the company, and that's just a bit of a, a diagram of what's happened to the market capitalisation in the last 18 months. I've had, got great shareholders. Uh, we've grown the shareholder base for, for 600, from 640 to 1,700 shareholders, and we ran an SPP a few months back, and it was uh, fantastically supported by our shareholders. So we really do believe we're in the right place, the right time, the right feedstock, and, and the right technology. Um, not many people have heard about high-purity alumina, but we think uh, we'll take a great advantage of the growing demand for the product. And there's our uh, disclaimer. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank <clears throat> you.